Praise the Lord to join New Beginning Community Church, our pastor, Pastor William Beasley Sr. We ask you to join us in singing the song, We Do Not Own the Right to This Music. service, our Bible study on tonight. Thank God for you that are on, um, for those of you that are on Zoom, and those of you that uh, Facebook Live, and those that are on YouTube, we thank 
thanking God for each and every one of you on tonight. We pray that the Lord has continued to bless your lives and that you will continue to follow his word. For we know that he is faithful to his word. Mom, can you see that screen? Huh? Yes, I can see it. Okay. We try to have uh, the word on the screen for your convenience. So bear with us. We have another lesson tonight. Still, uh, still dealing with the church. Still dealing with Paul the Apostle as he is uh, addressing the church, which is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. You want to take note to that? Huh? Oh. That we want to take note to that, that Paul is addressing the church. The church is the body of Christ. We want to note that. So we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the lesson. We bow our heads, be gracious in heaven, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your long suffering, your patience toward us. We thank you, Lord, for all that all the provisions you have made. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices that you have made in your body to bring salvation unto us. We thank you all that you have done on Calvary, Lord God. We thank you for the shed, the blood that you shed it, for we know without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. We thank you, Lord, for uh, rising again on the third day for our justification. We thank you for the sanctification of your spirit, Lord, in our hearts and minds, and we praise you and glorify you. We ask that you would move in this place tonight according to your will. You said what two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. And so we give honor to the spirit of Christ in our midst on tonight. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are still in the book of Colossians. We are still in the book of Colossians. And we are in we are uh, in the first chapter. We are in the first chapter of the book of Colossians. And we're going to read verses 17 and 18. And I'll be reading the King James Version. You follow along in whatever translation that you use. Uh, on our, in our lesson, uh, we have outlined verses 15 through verses 20. And you can read the remainder of those other ones on your time. We may get to it tonight, we may not, but we're going to read definitely going to read 17 and 18 and let's read it uh, with understanding verse 17 says and he is before all things and by him all things consist 18 and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first fruit from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence that in all things he might have the preeminence. That is our thought tonight. In all things, he might have the preeminence. In all things, he might have the preeminence. Preeminence suggests to you and I superiority in rank, position, character, to be first, greatness, excellence, predominance, transcendence, importance. And so as uh, as we said on the out onset that Paul is writing the church. The church is the body of Christ. And he is letting the church know that Christ is the preeminence in the church. Christ is, is preeminent in the church. Not you, not I. Christ. We are members of the body. He 
he is, the scripture said, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Preeminence suggests superiority in rank. There is, there is no one or nothing highly ranked in the church than Christ. Not the pastor, not the bishop, and not any of the auxiliaries that the church used. In your Bible, there's only two offices in the church, bishop and deacon. But the church have auxiliaries that they use for, for helps. As the help, as we understand in the, the book of Acts, when, when the need arose in the church, well, then they looked out and they chose some seven men, I believe it was, full of the faith in the Holy Ghost to take care of the need. So as, as needs arise in the church, the church has the liberty or the authority to, uh, to take care of the need. But uh, we, can't, we can't establish anything that would uh, challenge the preeminence of Christ. Christ is superiority in rank. He was superior in rank. We're talking about the church. He is uh, his, his, his position and his character. His position and his character is to be noted. <laughs> his position in your life and my life and his character in your life and my life is to be noted. This is why in the first chapter of the book of Acts in the 8th verse he said that we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us to be witnesses unto him because he is first in rank he, is, he has the preeminence over the church and so Paul is, is, Paul is letting the Colossians know because just like that church the church today, uh, we are falling victim to false doctrines. When you study uh, the movement of the church today, you'll see that the preeminence of Christ has been taken out. And the church has a... Uh, the church has a, a tolerant doctrine, a tolerance doctrine, false. There's no tolerance doctrine in Christ. There's repentance. There's repentance from sin. Period. This is uh, this is down from uh, the, the superiority. This is down from his position, his rank. Uh, his greatness, his excellence, and in that description it says predominance and it says transcendence. Predominance and transcendence. This is, it, this deals with Christ because he exceeds, he, he, he trans, transcends, he exceeds, he exceeds the limitation of, uh, of he, he, he has no limits. He, he is he has uh, the Lord has given him great great authority and great power without measure without measure hear what the spirit is saying to the church and we have to and we have to be reminded of the preeminence of Christ in the church the church is not powered or empowered by our intellect or by our ingenuity. Christ is the preeminence. In other words, he's superiority in rank. He's, he's to be first. His position, his character, and the fact that he transcends all limitations. <laughs> We're going to get into the lesson. But tonight is to remind the members of the body 
who has preeminence in the church, not you and I, but Christ. The Gospel of John, first chapter, uh, first chapter, third verse, first chapter, third verse, the Gospel of John. It says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We must be reminded of the preeminence of Christ. And we must uh, therefore go, go by. All things were made by him. Preeminence says that he's superiority in rank, yes. in position and character. Let us take heed to the truth, By, Jesus told him that <clears throat> Jesus told his disciples that ye shall said that if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. He said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that makes you free because of the preeminence of Christ, not because of. Uh, the thesis or the essay of some teacher with a title and a name this long. This is not the church. This is not the church. And we have to not fall for the false teacher. We have to get back to the priority, which is worship and praise and honor and glory unto our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There we, the scriptures say we can do nothing without him. Nothing. Last lesson said that uh, that his uh, how unsearchable how unsearchable was his judgment and his ways past finding out. The best thing that you and I can do and the best thing that you and I are urged to do is to just simply obey the word of God. There's nothing more important. There's, there's nothing more important because preeminence also deals with not only the superiority and rank, but the preeminence. The preeminence of someone deals with the importance. And so, since Christ is above, since Christ transcends all limitations, since Christ simply rose from the dead. We're talking about the power of the gospel of Christ, Jesus Christ. Since he transcends death, life, that is the uh, the measure of his importance. And so it behooves you and I to obedient, to be obedient to what he says and not do otherwise on our own conceit. That That is not obedient faith. Uh, John 1 and 3 says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This is superiority and rank. This is the preeminence of Christ that we are to come to understand and embrace. He is, the, the, the Bible said this, uh, this same Jesus whom uh, you have crucified, whom they crucified. He said, God had raised him up and made him both Lord and Christ. When you understand that word Lord deals with sovereign. He's sovereign. And not only is he sovereign, but he's also the Savior, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He's the sovereign Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. And the church, the church, the body of Christ. We have to understand, I guess maybe this would make more sense if we understood the dispensation of time that we live in. I guess this would make more sense if we understood the age of the time that we're living. We're living in the church age. We're not living under the law of Moses. We're not living in any other time, but we are living in the church age. And the church has the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of 
Jesus Christ for our salvation. He is the preeminence. He is first in rank. He is the head over all things to the church. Get into the lesson. Acts 26. Acts 26 and 23 says that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Read it again. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. It speaks once again of his preeminence, his superiority and rank. Yes. Now, I want to say something. I want to make it very plain. I want to make it very clear. Paul is telling the church, the body of Christ, reminding the, the church of Christ's preeminence. So since Christ is superior, his superiority in rank and position, then there's no way for him to be a second person of some trinity. That is another false doctrine. The church, listen to what the lesson is telling the church. The church is Christ. The church is members of the body. Christ is the head, not a second person. The, church, mm. the Lord is soon to come, and our faith, meditations, and our things are scattered there, there everywhere. But we have to get back to priority. We are members of Christ's body, period. He, he is the first, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And because of his atoning death and his redemption, he has redeemed us. He has placed us in, in the body according to the will of God. God has raised him up, made him both Lord and Savior. Lord means he's, he's sovereign, is sovereign, and he's Messiah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We can continue on in the words of Christ. And the Bible encourages you and I to believe on Christ as the scriptures have said. Mm -hmm. Not to believe on Christ according to the wisdom of men. Bible says we are not to put our faith in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The power of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the death, burial, and resurrection because that transcends all limitations, therefore making Christ the preeminence in the church. There is no higher ranking in the church than Christ. He's our head. We are the body, and as the head goes, so does the body go. So in other words, what, what this guarantees you and I is that as Christ was raised from the dead, that guarantees your and my, you and I, our resurrection unto life. Because he's first in rank, he's superiority. The body of Christ is, has been confused for a long time, and we're chasing after uh, a lot of false doctrines and false teachers. And we must get back to praise and worship. We must get back to the honor and glory of our great Lord and Savior, because he, had, he is the preeminence of the church. He is the firstborn from the dead. The church is the firstborn from the dead. When you understand the death, burial, and resurrection, and you understand the first born from the dead. Death is repentance. We must repent unto our sins and to ourselves. Jesus said that if any man will come after me, he must deny himself. First thing you and I have to do when we go after Christ is deny ourselves. We take up our cross and we follow after him. 
after him. Because why? Because he is the preeminence. He is superiority in rank. You don't walk before the general. You walk behind the general. Moving on. It is time for the body of Christ to, to, to reprioritize. Because the enemy comes not but for the steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we don't want to be found as a profane person, as Esau. We don't want to be found as a profane person, which suggests that we detest the things of God. You and I cannot detest the will of God the order of God, the plan of God. We cannot do it and be part of the body. We would, the scripture would tell us to uh, make sure that we are in the faith lest we be reprobate. Make sure that we are in the faith lest we be reprobate, lest we disqualify our own self. <laughs> Trying to be intelligent and slick. That's not going to cut it. Not gonna cut it. All he is all he is calling for is simple obedience. That's all he called for in creation was simple obedience. He didn't argue. He didn't fuss. He didn't fight. When he when they disobeyed, but then they fell uh, from the presence of the Lord. They were put out of the garden. First Corinthians. 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 19 and 20. It says this, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. <laughs> we'll read that again. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If your hope is only in Christ for this life, in a carnal, in a carnal sense, if, if your faith is only in Christ for cars and houses and lands, mm -hmm. then you are, then you are, he said, all men most miserable. You're mm -hmm. miserable because the preeminence of Christ transcends this life. All right. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We have great, we have greater wealth. We have greater treasure. Mm -hmm. We have he, he has filled us with His Holy Spirit, which has filled us with His eternal life. It transcends. It transcends this life. So if you only hope in Christ for the carnal things, then He said, "Are we all most miserable?" Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We've got to understand Christ's position in our life. And we've got to deny ourselves. And we've got to take up our cross. And we've got to follow after Christ. Because he is superiority in rank. He is the first. He's the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. He, trans, he transcends death life. Yes. And he's the head, and we are the body. We are his body. We are part of that. Ooh, we've got to get our priorities back together. Because, <laughs> because the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, peace, mm -hmm. long suffering. I mean, righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. And the Holy Ghost transcends mm -hmm. this life. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, which him being the first fruit, which is the first installment, mm -hmm. guarantees that we will rise again. Yes. Uh, verse 20 says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. The Bible, the Bible declared that the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. That's why it says become the first fruits of them that slept. Them that will be asleep or dead when Christ comes. He's the first fruit. They're going to they gonna rise first. And those of us that are alive and remain, we'll, we, we will be caught up 
together to meet them in the air. We're talking about the preeminence of Christ. He is superior in rank. He is superior in position. The head is the top position. Come on, somebody. He's superior in rank. We're talking about his preeminence. We're talking about Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 23. 1 Corinthians 15 and 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ's at his coming. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit when I spoke about uh, the preeminence of Christ mm -hmm. and the fact that he resurrected assures and guarantees that we will resurrect mm -hmm. yes. because, because of uh, his preeminence, because of his, his rank. He's superior. And he transcends death. And he rose from the dead. And so he being the head and we being the body, mm -hmm. because he rose, we'll, we'll rise. Yes. <laughs> We've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yeah. We must stop falling for these false uh, promises and these false... No, no. You have to understand the preeminence of Christ. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 says this, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ's at his coming, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ's at his coming, but every man in his own order, it will be according to it would be according if, if you're dead, if you're alive, <laughs> if you're not crisis, if you are crisis, every man according to his own order. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. Christ the first fruit. Christ the first installment. After that, afterwards, they that are crisis at his coming. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now, every man in his own order. So the, the, the Bible declared that as a tree falls, is how the tree lay. So every man in his order, if, 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 you, if you and I fall in an unrepented state, then that's how we are going to rise in an unrepented state. Because we are going to rise. Everybody is going to resurrect. Christ, the preeminence, have already assured that. Some will, some will resurrect to eternal life. Some will resurrect to eternal damnation. But the scriptures say, but every man in his own order. So if we fall short, and we fall in an unrepented state, then that's how we will fall. And that's how we will rise. He said, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ, the end of Christ going to rise first. Those of us that lie remain because of yes. at his coming. But everybody going to rise. But we just we all, we just want to rise according to how we went down. So if we went down in error, we're going to, in other words, the Bible say if we so, if we have sown to the flesh, then we're gonna have the flesh reap corruption. Right. But okay. if we have, but if we have sown to the spirit, then we're gonna have the spirit reap life eternal. Right. Simple as that. Because mm -hmm. why? Because Christ is the preeminence of the church in all things, all things, all things. Moving on, Ephesians, first chapter, verse ten. And 11. Verse 10 say that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one 
all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. This is verse 10. Read it again. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. The title is in all things he might have the preeminence. Christ, let me read verse 10 again, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, in the dispensation in the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. All things will be in Christ because Christ is the preeminent. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Matthew 28 and 18, when Christ rose in Christ's resurrection, Matthew 28 and 18, he said, all power in heaven and in earth mm -hmm. has been given unto me. And at that particular time, 28 and 19, he commissioned his disciples to go to every nation and to baptize them and to make disciples. Mm -hmm. They were commissioned to, they were commissioned to teach and preach what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is the preeminent mm -hmm. to the church. Stop falling for these slick doctrines. Stop falling for these slick essays and these slick theses. Stop falling for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Christ is the preeminence in all things to the church. Come on, somebody. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We have to repent. We have to repent of our sins and our ways. Sometimes I don't know if we understand what repentance means. Repentance means we have to come to a place where definitely we stop sinning, but we have to come to a place where we stop, where we, we have to come to a place where we become remorseful and we feel sorrowful for our manner of living if it is not in order with Christ. Christ is the preeminence of the church. And so our manner of living is not in line with the rank. We don't follow in line with the body of Christ. Then we've got to come to repentance and stop living in such a manner. The Hebrew writer said, uh, "Casting all our." The Hebrew writer said to cast off our sins and all our weights that does so easily beset us, and for and we are to run this race with patience that is set before us. That was, that was Ephesians 1 and 10. Ephesians 1 and 11. Ephesians 1 and 11 says, uh, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Predetermined, predestinated. The, 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 the foreknown knowledge, the knowledge that is foreknown, he said, in whom also we have obtained, obtained an inheritance. You and I did not ob ob obtain an inheritance in our own merit. It's in whom we obtain it. It's in Christ. He's the beginning. He's the first fruit from the dead. He's the preeminent whom we obtain an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will because, because of this simple, simple phrase because it is the will of God Sim simply the will of God we, are, we have obtained an inheritance because God had predestined Christ this is what preeminence means. He is the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead. He is the, he is superior. He is superiority in rank. This is according to the predestination. 
according to the purpose of him, which is God, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Come on, somebody. We're talking about the preeminence in Christ. He said, I am the door. There's so many scriptures where Christ speaks of the truth that we read them like riddles and neglect it and go, and go on with our thinking. I am the door. He said, I am the way. He said, all, he said, all that were before me were thieves and robbers. But yet and still, we'll go back and reach somebody that was before him and promise up and down, you know, yeah, okay, whatever. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the church, the body of Christ, we have no other salvation. Not you, not I. This is according to God's predestined purpose, according to his will. He worked it, he worked it out in own, his own self. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It is time for the church to put Christ back in his place. You go to church, you go to church now, and all their announcements are about the, the programs and what they got scheduled. They don't talk about Jesus no more. They talk, they talk about what they're doing. They talk about the programs they got. And I'm not here to condemn them. I'm not here to condemn them. John the Revelator said there's going to come a time when you got to let the unrighteous be unrighteous still. You got to let the unholy be unholy still. You got to let them. If they're if they still living, the Bible said, for the venture, the Lord will bring them to repentance. This is why we don't judge nothing before his time. Before the Lord returns. This is what the Bible says. Because the Lord can still bring you and I to repentance. And if you and I will, and if you and I are going to, to, to be called away, we're going to have to practice a life of repentance. Because the, there is no other preeminence in the church. Not your bright idea and not mine. Hear what the Spirit is saying. We have to put Christ, he said, he said, my house is a house of prayer. He said, but you have made it a den of thieves. And, and that just go right over. Because he wasn't standing there talking directly to us. Moving on. Uh, what we had? Ephesians. Ephesians 1, 21 and 22. Spoke a little too soon, but check this out. <laughs> Spoke a little too soon, but check this out. Ephesians 1, 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Come on, somebody. We talk about preeminence. Not no, not no slick thesis. Right. Not no slick essay. Not, 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 not no encouraging. Uh, what you call it? Speeches. The motivational speeches. Not no, not no good motivational speech. All right. Listen, listen. Far above all principalities. What is principalities? Principalities is a realm. Principality is a dominion that is ran by a prince. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Far above all principalities. Now, who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan. Far above all principalities. This is why your Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because Christ is preeminent. He's far above all principalities. Right. Woo, power. Power is authority. He's above all that. And might 
dominion and every oh my god and catch and catch <laughs> he said in every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come you're talking about you're talking about the preeminence you're talking about uh our great lord and savior how in the world you and i gonna come up with a ministry if you don't cut that out if you don't repent, if you don't repent and tell the Lord forgive you, every individual, every disciple, every disciple that the Lord commissioned before his ascending back into heaven, he commissioned them to teach the gospel. All right. He didn't tell them, that, all right, I want y'all to go out and create you a ministry. No. Christ is the preeminence in the church. He's the head. He's the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, he might have the preeminence. What was that, 21? Yeah. Verse 22. Ephesians 1 and 22 says, And has put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. The pastor is not the head of the church. Your favorite bishop is not the head of the church. The missionary is not the head of the church. The usher is not the head of the church. We are members of the body. Christ is the head of the church. The Bible says that a mediator is not a mediator of one. It said, but God is one. Mm -hmm. And it says, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. We're talking about preeminence. Amen. We're talking about foreordained, foreordained preeminence according to the purpose and the will of God. All right. All right. Okay. This is why Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke 24th chapter 47th verse, he said repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in my name, beginning at the root. We got a lot of repenting to do. We got a lot of getting back on track. All right. The church the church is the body of Christ. The church is not a place to network the church is not a place to market. None of that. The church is not a social club. The church is a house of redemption. The church is a place of salvation. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they are safe. You can be safe in the house of God. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 9. And we almost at the end. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation. <laughs> One place in the Gospel of John, he said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. He said, but ye are a chosen generation. That is another false theology. I accepted Christ. I chose Christ. You don't choose Christ. Christ chose you. Uh, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible said God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. All. All right. All right. <laughs> How can you say you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? I'm just trying to share the fact that in, in God there is no darkness. Mm -hmm. And he said he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
He has the preeminence. He's the head, he's superior in rank, position, and character. To be first, his greatness, his excellence, his predominance, his transcendence, and his importance. And he has called us out of darkness. He has called us out of bondage. He has called us out of captivity. He has called us out into his marvelous light, his marvelous light, into his preeminence. We are the body of Christ. Last one, and I'm going to give you up. Revelation, first chapter, verse 5 and 6. Revelation, the first chapter, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We're talking about the preeminence of Christ. The preeminence of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. Christ is the head of the church, not man. All right. The church was predestined according to the purpose of God to, 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 deliver, to deliver us. The Bible said to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Paul himself said that that. To, that we have been given the word of reconciliation. We have the ministry. We have the ministry. We have the word of reconciliation. He said, Jesus told, Jesus told somebody, he said, he said, other sheep that I have that are not as this fold, he said, them, I have to bring them in also. Talking about the Gentile, Gentile nation. All other nations that are that are not uh, Israel or not Jewish nations, but Gentile nations. He said, he said, them I have to bring in also. Your ministry and my ministry, if it is called of God, then it is a ministry of reconciliation. It is a ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can't make it any, <laughs> can't make it any plainer than that. <laughs> As it is all, as it is always, as it is always, I encourage you to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of them, and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I uh, allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't in y'all view. They're on, on Zoom too good. Uh, but you didn't have to go off. <laughs> wow. It went off. I left the end of the line. We're going to pray and give you a bow heads. Be gracious to Heavenly Father. In the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again. We attend the mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the visitation of your spirit. We thank you for the word that we have heard, Lord. For your salvation that you have brought unto us. We thank you for your redemption. We thank you for the death, your burial, and your resurrection, Lord God. We thank you for one day that you shall return and take us out of here. We pray, for, we pray that you would take us from this place, Lord, never from your presence. Assemble us together again at the appointed time, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name.